and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. We are so excited about all the options available for farmers today, but we're also excited about some of the things that are coming in the very near term. We're gonna be talking about one of those trait packages in list that will be available in some crops, already is available in other crops, and could be a help for you controlling tough weeds. Well, if you wanna get great yields on your farm, you've gotta have good soil development over a period of time. And one of those most important things is looking at your soil organic matter. It is tremendously valuable if you can build your soil organic matter. So today we want to talk about the benefits of soil organic matter and how you do build it over the long term. Well there are a lot of things to focus on in the farm. One of them that's very important is weed control. We'll show you how to stop our weed of the week but first here's today's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about spray adjuvants. Basically what these products are is they're thrown in along with other things, like herbicides for example, to make them work better. And right away your question is probably, well if you need to throw something in, why don't they just include it right with the herbicide? Well I hear that and I also hear, well man, aren't those herbicides very good? Why do they have to have something else in there? And you know when we think about the herbicides that we're using to control weeds on the farm, and we'll talk about a number of them throughout the show today especially during the weed of the week time. Well, a lot of times this herbicide controls one weed, but you got like 10 different weeds in your field, so you have to mix it with another herbicide. And all of a sudden, okay, well, this one needs this surfactant to work great, or this one needs this thing uh, mixed with it to work great. And, and you just never know where that herbicide is going to go. So for the manufacturers of these herbicides, there's a few reasons that they don't put surfactants right in. When you think about the tank mixing deal, that is a big consideration of, oh, what if they mix it with something hot? Well, then I don't want to have a real strong surfactant. I got to have something a little different. Or what if I mix it with this, this, and this? I want to have flexibility for my product. So leaving the surfactant out, letting the farmer add that is a good option. The other thing is just think about the trucking. Let's say that you make a herbicide or an insecticide or a fungicide, and you make it in one big factory in the United States, but you have to ship it all over the country. Wow, you don't want to have to ship any more product than you absolutely have to. And if a herbicide is worth $50, $100, $200 a gallon, who knows what it is, and a surfactant or an additive is worth $10 a gallon or $20 a gallon, well, I don't want to add this $20 product to my $200 product and then have to pay the same shipping on that. I want to just ship the expensive stuff around and then maybe they can source the other stuff locally so we don't have all that shipping on a cheap product. Another reason why these things are not included is just mixability. So maybe if they put the adjuvant that they need together with the product, it isn't going to store very well. It's going to separate. Or maybe it even renders that herbicide less effective if those two things are sitting together for three months or six months in a jug. There are a lot of reasons why they have to be separate. So let's talk about, okay, the spray adjuvant, what really does it do? Well, there are about three things that we're kind of looking for. One is a surfactant. And what that means is basically a surface active agent. We're trying to spread and stick the product product onto the leaf. So with a water droplet landing on a leaf, we don't want just a ball of water or a ball of spray sitting there. We want it to right away spread out and then stick onto the leaf. So that's important. Another thing we're looking for, if we want to step it up from the surfactant, we go to something like a crop oil or methylated seed oil if we want better penetration into the leaf. So it's nice to get the product to spread and stick, but now let's say we want to take that down into the leaf. You can do that better with crop oil or methylated seed oil because they will bust through the waxy leaf cuticle and help bring that product in. Well you think about the different products that farmers are going to use and you're looking at some that are water-based, some that are oil-based, and I mean completely different, right? You don't mix water and oil very well. And so using some kind of surfactant, some kind of product that you're going to mix in to help it stick on the leaf and move down through that leaf, it just makes a lot of common sense why you would need those things to get the job done. Another thing that we commonly put into products is something to sequester the hard water ions. So for example, in water there's things like calcium and magnesium and iron that in effect could neutralize the herbicide. Roundup is a good example. That's the reason why we throw ammonium sulfate together with Roundup, it's to 
tie up those hard water ions so there aren't as many that can hurt the performance of the Roundup. In addition to that, it's kind of nice to have a nitrogen source. What they found is a little bit of nitrogen, like you'll find in ammonium sulfate, is good for helping bring Roundup into weeds like water hemp or Palmer pigweed, for example. And when there's a little bit of nitrogen in there, for whatever reason, it helps to absolutely give you better performance. When I say for whatever reason, most likely the reasons are that plant speeds up its growth a little bit. It helps move it to the growing point, move the herbicide to the growing point quicker, and that means a better kill. Well, when you think about a spray adjuvant, we're talking about a product that a farmer may mix with a crop protection product to help either stick the product on the leaf or to help it get into the plant faster or just do a better job at what it's trying to do. And the manufacturers of chemicals don't generally put a lot of these in the jug because they're trying to minimize shipping. They're also trying to be more compatible with lots of different mixes that a farmer may need to get the job done on his farm. Well, that job may be weed control. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? With new seed traits and chemistries entering the market, your crop protection equipment needs precision and adaptability. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies has the products to give your applications greater accuracy, less drift, and more coverage. Hypro, right on technology, right on target. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. Our CT applicators are changing the way you apply products to seed. The one thing we really like about the applicator is how uh, accurate it gets the fluent agent dispensed on the seed. The CT applicator brush sifts powder into small particles, resulting in even and accurate distribution. I would strongly encourage looking at one of these applicators. The biggest selling point is the pinpoint accuracy, and we're not leaving dollars on the table. The CT applicator can be used with any seed delivery system at the time of planting. Remember, CT applicators for the changing times. The experience from the salesman to the building crew all the way through was just pleasant and professional. I feel that the people at Morton are my friends. I'll do anything for them because I felt they met that with me. I wouldn't have anybody build me a building other than Morton. I wouldn't even consider anybody else. It pays to go look around, but by far Morton's got the best building and we're just so pleased with it. Contact Morton Buildings today during our Building Value Day sales event. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Join the parade headed to New Orleans for the 2016 Commodity Classic, March 3rd through the 5th. It promises to be the jazziest Commodity Classic yet. Discover more at CommodityClassic.com. Don't let the 2016 Commodity Classic in New Orleans get by you. One of the most important things you can do for your soil, in most cases, is to try to build soil organic matter. Ideally, in a lot of soils, what we're looking for, we'd like to see 5% organic matter, maybe even 6 or 7% organic matter. We want as much organic matter as we can get, you know, as long as we're below 10% organic matter, for a number of different reasons, it's tremendously beneficial for your soil and for your crop. One of our biggest goals that we've got is to increase the organic matter levels in our soil. When we think about organic matter in the soil, it holds a lot of nutrients. It's also the home for all the microbiology in the soil, which is just critical when you think those little guys are working 24-7 for me and I don't have to pay them anything. But the big thing for me, we're dry land farmers and we don't get a huge amount of moisture many years on our farm is moisture holding. Every 1% of organic matter that I can increase on my farm is 4% more water I can hold. And when we take soils that are really run down that may be 1% organic matter or maybe two and we can build them up to four or 5%, all of a sudden adding two to 4% more organic matter in that soil, we're able to increase our water holding capacity eight to 16%. That's huge on the farm. And when you think about it, if you could have 
10% more water, 15% more water, wow! All of a sudden, higher yields are that much easier to attain. Two big things I look at in addition to what Darren mentioned. One is the sponginess of the soil. So when I'm jumping up and down on my soil, You're creating is, it compaction hard, brand. is it hard as a rock or is it a little bit spongy? I don't want to create compaction. I want to minimize compaction. If I have higher organic matter levels, typically I'm doing that. The other big thing I look at is nutrients. Organic matter mineralizes every year. In other words, it releases some of its nutrients for your crop for free. Roughly what we're talking about here is for every 1% of organic matter, you're going to have 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen come available, 4 to 7 pounds of phosphorus, and 2 to 3 pounds of sulfur every year for free. That's awesome. So when you talk about, hey, I want to try to leave something for my kids and my grandkids, well, there's nothing better you can leave them than a great farm that's got good soil organic matter levels, and obviously you're doing a number of other good things out in that field. Building the soil organic matter is very important. All right, so we may have generated a little bit of interest with you about, wow, I like organic matter. How do I get more in my soil? And there's a number of things that you can do, starting with tillage. When you're doing lots of tillage on your farm, it's very difficult to build organic matter levels up. Most of your soil's organic matter, the decomposed stuff, that's built from your roots breaking down. It is not built from that above ground stuff. The above ground stuff is basically to protect your topsoil. And yes, there are earthworms and things that can bring that down into the ground and build up your soil organic matter. But if you think that you're going to take organic material on top, till it in, and then that's going to become organic matter, good luck, not going to happen. All right, the tillage is certainly a big piece, but I realize, wow, I don't know if I can switch the whole tillage system over on my farm in a real hurry. Okay, let's look at some of the other things you can do. You can add manure or compost. Wait, stop. We're on that list. Tillage is by far and away number one going no-till. Number two, by far and away, number two is plant crops with lots of roots. Corn, on average, has five times the root mass of soybeans, so that's huge. We want to get lots of roots out there. Then we step it down to manure, and I'm a, I agree with you 100%, Darren, manure is important, well, manure, but I call it number three on the list. Manure and compost are critically important. Another thing you can do is use cover crops in your system and look for cover crops that have huge root systems that can really help to develop what's going on beneath the surface, and then do everything to feed those crops right. We see so many guys throwing a cover crop out, not adding any fertility in a situation where, hey, I just raised all this tremendous yield. There's no fertilizer left in my soil. Now I put a cover crop out and wonder, man, that cover crop didn't really thrive. Well, feed it. Feed it just a little bit. The fifth one, there are some biologicals out there now that have been proven to increase root growth and uptake of nutrients in your soil. If you can do that, you're going to build organic matter faster as well when you have a more well-developed root system. The other thing is when you're getting all those other nutrients that are out there into your plants and into that system, you have more nutrient availability and long-term that's going to be a good thing. On our farm, we use products like Quick Roots uh, that's a biological fungi and bacteria that both help crop production, but there are a number of other biologicals out there as well to improve root growth. Well, once again, we are big believers in building organic matter up to a point on your farm. If you've got lower organic matter levels, you absolutely want to reduce your tillage, plant crops with lots of roots, use manure, cover crops, and biologicals. That can help, but it's not going to happen instantaneously. However, it can absolutely happen for you. You can build your organic matter levels 1 or 2 percent, maybe even 3 percent in the next 20 years. Well, Getting your soils right and getting the right amount of organic matter out there is very beneficial to crops, but you still have to do a great job controlling weeds if you want to have high yields. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show. Regalia RX Biofungicide activates a plant's natural defense system, limiting the effects of disease and improving overall plant health. Regalia RX complements your fungicide program to optimize yield and strengthen return on investment. Ask your retailer for Regalia RX today. At Fisher Tradition Farms, we verus all of our acres, and any new additional acres are automatically verused. Verus maps allow us to know exactly where our soil types change and how much they change. We use AgriLiquids Enhance High Energy N and Access that allows us to add sulfur. We can customize our AgriLiquid products on a per pound, per acre basis as needed. This year's projected U.S. soybean yield will lose over half a billion dollars per point in shrink. Eliminate shrink in your bin. Store grain without lowering moisture content with the AgriDrive Bullseye Temperature and Moisture Controller. The Bullseye monitors air temperature and relative humidity, allowing your fans to utilize the weather's natural condition to maintain your grain at market moisture. 
Fan run times drastically decrease along with the cost of over drying. Eliminate shrink today. Call now. How will you secure your farm for the future? The Quasar Chopping Corn Head from Capello USA will help. Our design is focused on efficiency, longevity, and reducing harvest loss, making the Quasar the corn harvest solution to bring your farm forward. With hundreds of units ready for immediate delivery, secure your farm's future today. Do it for your farm. Do it for them. Order now. Capello USA. Italian craftsmanship. American grit. For lower costs, higher production, Mantico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mantico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. Darren and I are very fortunate because of the fact that we do our television show and radio show. We get to talk to some of the head people in these different seed companies and crop protection companies and travel around the world visiting with them and finding out, hey, what's coming new? How do you feel about this? Everything else. And I just want to give you a little bit of insight to Dow's enlist trait. Yes, this enlist trait, you probably have heard of it. Everybody refers to it as the 2,4-D trait. And then they talk about Monsanto's extend trait as the dicamba trait. All right. But when we talk about the weed control product that you're going to use. Everybody says, well, 2,4-D, I'm familiar with that. No, you're not. Not with this 2,4-D. It's different. And anyway, when we go back and talk to the Dow people and say, well, tell us about your enlist trait and how do you feel about that? They have just told us, look, we feel so confident that this new 2,4-D, we've basically eliminated the vapor problem. We've reduced the drift problem. If people use this right, our solution is so much better than anything else. People are going to demand that enlist trait on their farm. You know, I just find that kind of interesting, Darren, because we look at these as, hey, the decamba trait's a good option. The enlist trait's a good option. We have Liberty. We have Roundup. We got a lot of options out there. And Dow is just dead set on our options so superior on the chemistry side that people are going to flock to our trade. Well, I certainly have a number of good things going. For example, they've stacked other herbicide technology into the Enlist trait. So it's not yep. just resistance to this 2,4-D or this brand new 2,4-D form they've got. For example, in the Enlist soybeans, they've got Roundup resistance and Liberty resistance in addition to this new 2,4-D resistance. Now we've got three different herbicides that normally would kill the beans, but now they're going to be safe on the beans and deadly on the weeds. I really like that they're using a lot more than just one thing because if we were just using the 2,4-D product, we'd be worried about resistance almost right away. Look at the corn side. We may have an inexpensive grass control option too. You might not even need the Roundup side because they're going to have FOP tolerance, in other words, tolerance to assure to fusillade those types of products. So it's something to talk to your seed provider about because the corn's going to be out there on a limited scale in 2016. Cotton as well is going to be out there. So we're just excited to see the chemistry get labeled and the label come in soybeans, hopefully at some point in 2016. So in 2017, we've got this as a viable option. Well, the big fear that I hear from farmers is what about the genetics? Okay, the trait, we'll give you that. That trait looks really fantastic fantastic. But what about the genetics that are behind it? They, they must be just terrible because they aren't DuPont and they aren't Monsanto right away. This is Dow that's starting this off. Hey, Dow is a trait licensing company. They're licensing this trait out to these other companies to put genetics in. So you should have availability of a wide variety of genetics out there. I'm not tremendously concerned about this. I think they're going to be very competitive. You look on the soybean side and they're working with Stein on the breeding program. On the cotton side, of course, Dow is big in cotton. No worries there at all. And on the corn side too, they're offering that trade out to all the genetic partners. So they're able to get breeding from a number of different sources. It's just that no matter what the trait is, you're going to have to find the right genetics for your farm. And there are going to be some differences out there, just like there are just with a straight roundup 
Freddy trait. There's differences in genetics. So you find the hybrids or the varieties that work for you, and then you've got a good trait package to go as well. The other thing we want to stress today is even though you may have a great 2,4-D type option post-emerge, use pre-emerge herbicides. They're really going to help your weed control program. Well, when it comes to weed control, you want to make sure you're controlling our weed of the week as well. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Field pennycress. All right, if you've ever had field pennycress on your farm, you know it literally smells bad. So when you come into a field and you smell that smell, you know, oh, there's field pennycress out there. It's a winter annual weed, so it gets started in the fall, and it's one of those first weeds that's up early in the spring, and it can get big pretty fast. We see a lot of issues in unplanted acres, but then also in crops like alfalfa, we have a real struggle with field pennycress getting going if you don't have a good thick stand. So to get it under control, start with a good spring burn down in unplanted acres. We really like sharpen in front of mini crops. 2,4-D is an option, but wow, it can certainly harm a crop if you're too close to planting. So I'm really cautious on that. I prefer a Roundup with a Sharpen as your best burn down Yeah, but option. Darren, this is where the Enlist trait, the Dicamba trait, they're going to be really nice because now you'll have 2,4-D and Dicamba as spring burn down options. The problem with field pennycress, it's a winter annual. So ideally, we'd like to see you spray it in the fall. If you didn't get your fall spraying done though, now you're going to have to deal with this pennycress in the spring and it can be big and that's real problematic. But the key is getting that good burn down or doing good enough tillage. Sometimes we'll see pennycress just knocked over with tillage and not completely killed. So just make sure that if you've got pennycress in your farm, you get after it right away in the spring. Okay, so here's the rapid fire herbicide solution. In corn, start off with Corvus, Triple Flex, or Sure Start, then come back post-emerge with Status plus a half pound of Atrazine. In soybeans, we really like our three pre-program. We like to start with something like Authority MTZ or Valor plus Metribuzin, then add a yellow to that as well. If you're doing tillage, that may be Treflan. No-till, that may be Prowl. Post-emerge, I like Pursuit and Raptor, but of course, if you have Roundup or Liberty crops, Roundup and Liberty are excellent at controlling field pennycress. And in wheat, we start off with Sharpen in the burn down. It works great and gives you some residual. If anything makes it through that, well, then you come back with Husky to clean it up. That's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. I choose Stein. I choose service. I choose results. I choose research. I choose genetics. I choose Stein. At Stein, we have products that are second to none. You know, Stein has a, a background of the highest yielding genetics in the marketplace. They are a world-class leader in genetics. We push the limits, we try new things, we develop genetics, all designed to benefit the farmer. I choose Stein because Stein has yield. Presenting the new 2016 Apache Sprayer. It was very smooth driving down the road and especially in the field. The visibility is just excellent in it. The wide panoramic view is very beneficial in getting accurate spraying done. I've done a lot of shopping, I've done a lot of price comparing. I could see right away that for what I was getting in this machine versus the competition, this machine will do anything and everything any competitor's machine will do and it'll definitely help my bottom line at the end of the year. Uh, we have a school and a church nearby. I actually go to the classroom to educate the students about what's going on here on my farm. The system that I have, I tie everything together. No-till, cover crops. We applied AgriLiquid in furrow with our soybeans this year. It seemed like they jumped out of the soil, even though we had the record rainfall. I really feel that I'm feeding my plant on a consistent year-round basis throughout the growing season. 
Compaction created during planting leaves thousands of dollars of potential yield in your fields. Copperhead Ag has developed the Furrow Cruiser Spiked Closing Wheel to close the seed trench more effectively. With a unique combination of closing power and control, the Furrow Cruiser provides earlier, more even emergence and higher stand counts, returning yield potential and putting profit back in your pocket. For more information on why you should never run a traditional closing system again, visit copperheadag.com. With the success of the Case IH Dagger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. You need to attend a 2016 Ag PhD Winter Workshop. Even if you have regularly attended Ag PhD Winter Workshops in the past, you won't want to miss this year's events. We cover a wide variety of topics at our agronomy workshops, soils clinics, and tiling clinics. These events are free, but not only that, at most of our events we'll feed you well and send you home with a great agronomy book and lots of ideas you can try on your own farm. Please check out agphd.com for the complete winter schedule of events that start January 6th and run through the end of February. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. is the real value of ethanol blended fuels. It's the topic of today's Iron Talk. When you look at straight up fuel mileage and BTUs in ethanol versus gasoline, most people expect it to be less. Here are the actual numbers. On a per gallon basis, E10 fuel is approximately 112,000 BTUs per gallon. Straight ethanol has approximately 76,000 BTUs and E85 has around 82,000 BTUs. Our local gas station prices gas around $1.99, E10 around $1.79, and E85 at $1.39. One of the key factors of fuel mileage is the level of energy in the fuel. Comparing E85 to E10, the energy level is about 22% less. Therefore, you'd expect the same decline in mileage. So what's the cost difference? At our local station, the price difference is almost exactly 22% less for E85. At this spread, if you have a flex fuel vehicle, you have the choice of supporting corn-based ethanol or fuel imported from another country at the same exact price. Another key factor in fuel mileage is the type of engine you're running and the way you operate that vehicle. If you're running normal speeds and not pulling anything, the economics could get a whole lot closer. To figure out the best economy for you, plug in the fuel prices in your area and consider your driving habits. There's a reason that ethanol is actually now being imported in many countries, including into the Middle East. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields in your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. and 11 p.m. Central weekdays. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Soil is nature's filter to keep contaminants out of our water. As rain falls on soils and seeps down through, the minerals and microbial life in the soil remove and detoxify nutrients as well as inorganic materials. To learn how farmers manage soil and groundwater, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.